this junk, this the alcohol that's the top. I don't know. Here's a um, so we just insert it back in here. Okay, and Scott. Hey Scott, we're good. Okay, now we can. Oh, now we can go. Hey Scott, we're good. Thank you. Recording in progress. Apologize for the delay. I could have opened it up on my end. Uh, that's two as well. Yeah, I had it here too, yeah. but I couldn't print it. So. Okay. Who's here? Let's see. Wow. All over the place. Scott's, Scott's attending via uh, Zoom, and Sarah's not going to be here. Um, but who is here? David. Big boss. Yeah, we Good, right? No. Answer to that. Bob? And let's see. Uh, we need to. We have both alternates are here. And uh, because Sarah's not going to be here, we have to have one of you be a voting member. And according to our. He's the senior. According to the RSA, the senior member. It's not an age thing, really. It is It's time to see. I mean, if it were an age thing, you'd still win, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you'll be a voting member this evening. But according to our bylaws, you have to participate as if you were going to vote. I like being on the jury. Cool. All right. Uh, review of approved minutes of meeting May 9th. Everybody look at them all. Do I get all that extra time? Yeah. Yeah, I approve the meeting. I mean, May 9th. You're ready to approve motion, motion? Motion, yes. Second motion to approve in the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We have public tonight. Excellent. Hi. Welcome. Good evening. Um, we, we, uh, we have a place on, on our agenda for public comment for anything that's not on the agenda. So if you had something you wanted to talk about that we're going to be talking about tonight, now is not the right time. But if there's something that you had different, now's your chance. No, we're good to wait. Thank you. Okay. Good. All right. Yeah, I think you said that wrong. You said now's your chance. So is public speaking now or? Uh, uh, for anything that's not on the agenda. It's not on the agenda. Right. Then so now's, now's the time to. Then that would be your time to speak. Yeah. Okay. If, it, if it's not something that, that's currently on the agenda for this evening, please. It's not. Yeah. Okay. So um, first of all, thanks for the opportunity. My name is uh, Peter Candy. This is my fiance, Karen DiGregorio. Uh, I live on 88 Ridge Road, and my next door neighbor on the north and west side, uh, a fellow named Mike Adjutant, is uh, clearing his lot and preparing to build a home. And uh, uh, to be candid, Mike and I got into a dispute. Uh, without getting a permit, about 12 years ago, uh, I dug a one foot wide and foot and a half foot deep trench uh, to drain the water that the town dumps on my property with a culvert um, that was flowing down and um, keeping property close to my house wet. And so I dug a diversion trench. I didn't need, know that I needed a permit, now I do. Um, so it stopped 70 feet from my lease line it stayed on me, 
And when uh, Mike bought the lot that he bought adjoining me, uh, he said uh, he had a water problem. And uh, could he connect to my trench onto his property? And I said, yes. Again, I didn't know I needed a permit, but I did, I did give him permission. So uh, he fell up, hired a fellow to come in with an excavator who uh, got very aggressive. And uh, the trench that he dug was about three and a half feet across, and deeper, and uh, dug up a lot of big rocks. And anyway, um, we had a dispute about cleaning it up. And Mike hired a hydrologist who uh, does a lot of work in the area who um, reported me to the state um, that I had um, dug a trench and that uh, it was potentially damaging wetlands. So that I hired an attorney and a surveyor, and the state looked into it and wrote back that they had no issue with what had happened. It's so not, It's not wetlands. So here we are. Uh, Mike is clearing his property and putting in a um, uh, driveway and he's starting about five feet off the lease line with the amount of fill that is a pretty steep drop off of Ridge Road to get down on this property. And my concern is <clears throat> that I do have standing water in pools that are three to four feet across in between trees on my property and I'm concerned that I can't do anything about that. Every time it rains hard town dumps their water onto me. That's just the way it is. I understand that there isn't anything I can do about that. Um, and there's nothing I can do about filling the holes in. Uh, I wanted to fill them in with gravel so that it was relatively level. I understand uh, that's difficult to do. But I don't want to get into a situation where his steep driveway, and I can show you pictures of what he's doing, is going to dump more water on me that I can't do anything about. Um, <clears throat> Some of what he did to clear his driveway actually is on my property. Uh, not very far, three feet on my property, but I talked to the building inspector and he told me that his understanding was that his driveway had to be 15 feet off my lease line. I don't know, I haven't read the code. Uh, but if that's true, right now his crushed, crushed granite and the preparation rock that he's putting in is about five feet away. So I don't know if the 15 feet is pavement or if it's built construction material, but my problem is not that Mike's building a driveway. Uh, if, he, if he wants to put a house in there and build a driveway, that's fine. But I'd like him to slope the driveway toward his property, not slope it to my property where it's going to trap water that I have no way of getting out of there. So that's what I'm here for. I don't know what the status of his permits are. I, I thought before he could strip mine his property, but he had to at least have a driveway permit and a septic permit. But perhaps that's not right. Maybe you guys can tell me what's, what the, the law is. Sorry, that's it. Thank you. Um, so what I'm going to say next, you're not going to lie. We're not the right place. However, um, Bob, uh, Bob Thompson is on the select board and um, my sense is, is that something that our building inspector would have purview over. We, <coughs> the planning board sets the rules. Yep. Um, but the uh, the administration of them is done by the uh, by the town government. And, and so that person is really uh, the, it's the select board. They have the building inspector in place to participate in the, the process uh, for a new build. I did talk to the building inspector. He was very responsive. He immediately went up and talked to the people on site. Uh, they've been there for about two weeks with heavy equipment and yeah. uh, have taken almost all the trees off, almost all the way down to 16. So there's a Pretty steep slope there now. That's uh, yeah, uh, Bob. I, I I went trees. Is there any other part of the process other than working with Kevin? Or? Yeah, Kevin would uh, report in. Kevin's obviously the one that uh, would have uh, recommended approval of the neighbor's building permit. So things didn't go the way they were supposed to. He would be 
somebody that would uh, we would look to report the situation to us and then take appropriate steps at that time. And Kevin is who? Who is Kevin? Yes. Kevin Bennett is our uh, building uh, code enforcer. So he's the one that we go to for problems for any problems that occur. Which we've already if there's had. a complaint on a um, permit that's been issued and in process, that's typically where we would hear about it from. Okay, and I just have one more question. What about when it involves the state? So the way our neighbor put his big gully, I mean, ours was like 12 inches and he dug a three, whatever, by four or one. But he brought it to the back of his property, which now flows across our property, mm -hmm. and it goes out to Route 16 a different way. Mm -hmm. So I thought there was an ordinance that said that you can't change the flow of water from the town of Bork State. Uh, again, they we're in the wrong church. Wrong church? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have to defer. That's um, fine. I, I, I appreciate you what you're saying, and I understand what you're saying. Have you had that conversation, you had that conversation with Kevin? No. Uh, I, Kevin said he was going to go out there, which I believe he did, but I don't think he walked to the back of the property. Mm -hmm. So now where our neighbor's dumping the water, it, and it's just by nature, it's at the top of the hill but it flows across our property. And then back onto him. And then back onto him, but yeah. it's also making all, it all wet down there, where before the trees were there, and there wasn't a big flow problem. Yeah. So now it's just a big, we get hit three ways. His way, the town, we have actually two culverts from the town on our property. Right. So town now we get three sides. people dumping water on the town, on mm -hmm. our yard. Yeah, Kevin. Kevin's weighed in on hydrology issues and and has provided ordinance information on that in the past, and is familiar with what is a state issue and what's a town issue. And he can okay. He can be a resource. Well, you answered there. our question because we really didn't know where to go. Yeah. Thank you. Hey. We're, and uh, we meet. Typically, it's the second and fourth Tuesdays of the month at 3.30, right here in this room. Things got jumbled up with one of our select board members being unavailable, so we're meeting the next two Tuesdays in a row. The next two? Yeah, and if you call the town office, uh, our uh, selectman's office there, and speak to Julie Hoyt, just tell her you presented an issue here at the planning board, seems to be something that needs to be referred over to a select board agenda and she can take some steps to get you on the agenda and uh, typically we would always want to make sure Kevin would be here anything on the agenda he's very proactive about going out and you know, understanding the issue he was immediately responsible I appreciate that yeah good I'm glad you've been happy with yeah. thank you very much Appreciate your time. Appreciate you being here. And <laughs> you don't know where to go. It's good to well, just talk to folks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry we couldn't help more directly. Thank you. That's right, you did help. <laughs> now, are we able to speak to Kevin even though there's not a, uh, do we have to wait for a meeting to talk? No, a conversation no. Uh -uh. With him? Give, give him a call. Uh, okay. Julie can reference, get his email address to you, the phone, he's, he's very approachable. Great. We just finished building a new garage uh, last year and we worked with him we through that process. It was really good yeah. to work with him. Yeah. Good. I'm glad you've been happy with him. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, there's, there's a sign-in sheet on the back table back there. Yes. If you could sign in just so I can kind of reference that you were here tonight. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. some meaning. 
reality. All right. Um, updated land subdivision regulations, Mr. Campbell. So I have, since I have everyone here except Sarah, I can get her signature later. But we did modify the land subdivision regulations by requiring an electronic mylar. <laughs> we all agreed on that a couple months ago. I just now need, I have copies of something that were highlighted where it's changed in the ordinance and it's also changed on the application. You want to see that, but then I need your signature here because for some reason this document requires signatures of all of us. So never, we don't have any others like this, but this one requires signatures of everyone. I have everybody here. They can just sign that name. It's too highlighted on the other pages and then I can forward this to Betsy and have her print copies for us. And that's it. I believe the reason that we have to sign that is, is that it is a, um, an internal document. It is not one that is um, voted on by the town. I don't know. You probably know the rules better than I do. No. No. Well, or it's you. either that or it's tradition. I, I, whatever the thing is, if that's what we're supposed to do. Okay. Maybe it's because we vote on it and it doesn't go to the town. That's right. right. That's right. That, that makes sense. Yeah. They both have the same. Okay. Everybody that's my reason. That's so logical. Whether it's right or not, I right. know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's logical. So if it holds up, that's great. <laughs> All right. Wow. We're already at short term rent flaps. It's five minutes after. Wow. wow. We almost made up all our time. Yep. Ready? Okay. Hey, guys. Scott, I'll switch while I get you to sign this thing, too. fits right into the new ordinance that we just passed at town hall meeting, at the town meeting, because they put in an application for both their house and their ADU. Mm. <laughs> and they don't distinguish, they have both, and they have, and it's the address is the same. Um, it's the one in Rogers location that we had to, to look up where that was, but mm -hmm. they have a three bedroom dwelling and a two bedroom apartment, and they brought, they put in both, and we apparently we did, got, we did not get confirmation of what someone they were doing. Um, I s got a note back from Betsy saying that they wanted to the house. Okay, so we have, okay, so we'll make a comment? Yeah. Okay. So we believe that that's the application is for the house, not for... But it raises the question though, should we change the application? Because there's no one on the application for something to tell us that. Mm. You know, to indicate how oh, it's going to be. No. Oh, okay. Does the regulation require that they can only rent one or the other? Right. But they have an option. You know, they can do one or the other. Right. So they can apply for the application for both. No. They can only have one available as a short-term rental at any one time. But couldn't they do, uh, if they wanted to use the house and do the, the accessory dwelling in it as a rental, and then two weeks later, they're not going to use the house, they can't No, they'd have to send another $150 check, have another approval process, they would have to terminate the other, and then start the next one. And they could do that every couple of weeks if they want to do that. They keep on sending us $150 every couple of weeks and go through the process. So they have to make a choice forever. Yes, that's, it, it, that's the way it's stipulated. Right. 
And the intent was so we, somebody couldn't have both or flip flop, because that was one of the things we talked about when we agreed on this ordinance was or not live there at all and rent them both, both. up. Right, you couldn't do that. And that was the no, intent. I understood they couldn't rent both, but I wondered if they had an option of doing Yeah, that, that was something that we talked about and we felt that it was impossible to administer that. And how do you how do you verify that? And it's inappropriate because they're in essence doing what we don't want to yeah. do. And the whole purpose of adding an accessory dwelling unit was to make available housing for um, other than short term rentals. So that would be the accessory dwelling unit would always be available for rentals of more than a month. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, no, oh, right. right. Well, hmm? Whatever our definition is for short term yeah. rental. It's less than a month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thirty days. Mm -hmm. Thirty rentals. It's thirty rentals. There's no time period. No. But I think no the number of days. Yeah, but it's I think the state the defines what long term rentals are. So I think that's. No, we have a definition of what a short term rental is. That. I I, I forgot what it is. I believe it's. Less than 30 days. I believe it's 30 days or less, yeah. No, no, less than 30 days. I said 30. Okay, so everything else is in line. The ad does show only the house, so maybe that's where she interpreted it. It's only the house. They didn't show it. They don't advertise the ADU, but they submitted the paperwork, uh, the tax card on both. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, realistically, I would expect that if someone's renting their home and they have an ADU and it's not otherwise rented that if whoever was contacting them said hey I have X number of people uh, it would be really difficult for someone to figure out whether or not they rented just the house or the house eat you know the whole shebang um, I don't know how you administer that so, I suppose if they if they manage that and they got in that process, it, they could squeak by. But I mean, it's not the intention. People go faster than fifty miles an hour when the right. speed limit's set to. But they could rent the uh, accessory dwelling unit out for two months if they wanted to. Yeah. Again, the intent of the change was to not prevent people from making use of the property, but to, re to simply avoid the situation I think that Dick's talking about, where we basically have somebody who's got two rental units available. Okay. So I have a motion to accept application. I have a motion to accept. Second. 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 All in favor? All right. All right. Okay. Any opposed? Hearing none, we're good. Okay, so now we'll go back to the order. Um, this is Jason and Megan. Nobody going to try to pronounce that last one. Um, Atarski. This is over on the Whitney Hill Road Loop, three bedroom tax card, no um, septic uh, on file, um, older unit. Um, they do advertise three bedrooms, six, uh, sleep five in actually in their advertisement, so they're well within the limit. All the other application, they have uh, identified a person who will be responsible for the property, and all the other applications and portions are Motion to accept. So this is a, this would be under the thirty days, right? So yeah, both of these. Yeah. All three of these are. Okay. I have a motion. Second. Second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. <laughs> All 
Uh, last one. Um, everything looks good except there's no ad for what, what we know they're doing. There's no ad here. And I don't think they got one. That was another one of your questions. Um, there's nothing attached as far as the ad is concerned. So we'll just make a note of that. that, we don't know that All right. Well, uh, one of the applications did not have the information for the uh, contact. It does. This is the one. And they do get But they, they filled it in? Yeah, they, they came in. Oh, okay. But the, the application was incomplete. Right. We received it, didn't have the complete data for the uh, contact, New Hampshire contact. Or out of state residents. Yeah. Looks like they uh, emailed information to Betsy and Betsy. Phone. Great. So that's the one. Other than that, the, everything else looks fine. This one was up to date because I just never had it. So I didn't know. We don't know what they're advertising the place for. It was a three bedroom, two bath. Again, there's a chicken and egg process here. Yeah, this is a brand new one. Yeah, for folks who don't advertise until they get the permit, they wouldn't have an ad. Sure. To your, to your point, Scott, I think all of the ones we're seeing now are all under the 30 day with a 30 visit. 30 rental. Because they're almost all new. So. All right. Uh, motion to accept. I hear, have a motion to accept over here. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, before we run into the uh, capital improvement program update, um, I had asked uh, last meeting uh, for everyone to take a, a moment in the past month to think about what items are outstanding relative to uh, activities that we might engage ourselves in. Um, for the re remainder of the year. Uh, we're, we need to obviously wrap up the capital improvement program, and that's going to take some time. Um, but I also wanted to try to understand what is the next thing in the queue. Is there anything that anybody has that they feel is um, something that we need to address in time for the uh, next town meeting? Um, or that we need to get at simply because we should. I went to the uh, hazard mitigation meeting yesterday, which was appropriate because I'd been on that when I was a selectman and I was off of it when I was no longer a selectman, but now I'm back on it thanks to the planning board putting me there. Yeah, I'm not back. Uh, but there's, uh, <coughs> there may be a need for an overlay district for the water intake of the town water. And that would be up Route 16, which uh, if we had a oil truck spill up there is going to really adversely impact uh, the water spill. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be something to talk with uh, Scott Hayes about mm -hmm. the water bar. And uh, I, I've always felt it's something that we should be uh, trying to be proactive about because it's such a sensitive area. There's places with no uh, guardrail, with pretty good drop-off, and uh, certainly, you know, all kinds of weather conditions. So, it, it, if anything, we should be prepared uh, if that happens. I know that uh, the water precinct is looking for a uh, drilled well permit as a backup or um, an additional source of water for the 
Um, so that's in the works. But anyway, there's something in the water, in the works for water that would be uh, good for us to deal with. Okay. Is that, you know, we, we did made an effort for groundwater and uh, we, we have that in place, but it sounds like what you were describing is different from that. Is that, is that correct? Yes, and if you want, I can pursue that further for our next meeting with Scott and uh, with the other folks at Hazard Mitigation. Okay, and if there's some boilerplate, somebody's got something out there already that we can steal, and we can look at, that would be great. I love the idea. Uh, and I think, now we have a wellhead protection ordinance. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Okay. That, we might have to look at that uh, just to see that we're you know, up to stuff on that. Yeah, I mean, right now we have, we have two, two parts of the um, current regulations regarding water. Um, but if I'm listening to you correctly, I, I'm hearing that there might be some twist on this that we're, we might not have currently, and that we need to either amend what we have or put some additional wording out there. The, um, I think not the last, but another aspect is the fire suppression for any new subdivisions. In other words, do we have um, anything in the ordinances that would require a fire pond or storage of 10,000 gallons of you know, water? Or I, I think we did that up at the Dana place. So we have that? We do have that. In from, okay. Okay. We, I think we have that in place. But again, if I'm hearing you say that there's some tweaking that we might need to do. So oh, we'll look at it. Yeah. Okay. We'll take a look at it with a different set of lenses and we'll see whether or not we, we're... Um, it's interesting when you said anytime. Go ahead. Um, well, I'm sensitive to the issue of the, um, the river being polluted by a truck or whatever, salt, who knows. Right. Um, and, the, and the idea of a secondary well is probably prudent. But I don't think that affects our capital improvement plan because that's the precinct's expense, uh, not the town's. Um, we deal with the school, and that's the school is kind of separate. I, I think that we should at least acknowledge it. Well, as, as I said, I'm sensitive to the issue. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. The school board, again, is a separate entity to the slide um, But I, I think that we should, again, whatever the regulations are, that most expenses relative to the water precinct are borne by the precinct. Right. And, and therefore, I don't, I don't see how it affects our capital really well. No, but I, what I asked was whether or not we need to make changes to regulations. Um, and that's why Dick brought it up, I believe. Um, I don't think it does affect the capital improvement program uh, at all. I agree with you. Um, but, I, but I do think that it, um, when we put regulations together, we usually do that with a set of marching orders, if you will. Uh, we wanted to do this, and we look at it from a particular perspective, and um, you guys are looking at it from a different perspective, and it may be that what we've done is not sufficiently three-dimensional uh, for that need, um, as opposed to some of the other things we've looked at. So, yeah, I think that's a reasonable thing to, to okay. kind of... And it, well, it's three, three things I took away from the meeting, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To the subject of fire prevention, I've always thought that um, storage of water would be a good thing. I know Barla put a big tank up above Linderhoff for two reasons. One, to supply <laughs> water, but also to supply um, fire suppression when needed. And I think that, again, I 
regarding, you know, putting aside the costs, it might be prudent someday to plan water storage, high roll, black, you know, wherever we couldn't have a fire pump, to have storage that would be used for fire suppression. But that's, again, a bit of a pipe dream. You just talk, well, since you talked about fire suppression, I thought it was. Well, you said metaphor for pipe dream. Oh. <laughs> that was not by mistake. Uh, master class. <laughs> oh, I do have one more. Please. Mm -hmm. uh, it's for the the idea of a repeater of a time tyrol for the uh, emergency communications. And uh, <coughs> I guess the big number could be $25,000 for just a full board, you know. And then down from that, they're, you know, the Walmart model or the, you know, the whole nine yards. But um, I'll try to, if you'd like, uh, pursue that a little more. Of, and that would be, I think, the um, capital improvement expense. Um, what was this again? It's a repeater <laughs> so that I think with the people with the handhelds can get communication uh, to the whoever's uh, acting as the central. It's used also to tone out for the fires. I think the toning out is working, the, what they have in place. Right. That part is working. I think it was more the communication uh, with the handhelds. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, yeah, if your cell towers are out, um, <laughs> yeah. no more cell towers. But they have solar collectors up there for the matter. But in regard to that that, that activity, uh, we have. Uh, we have discussed for the capital improvement program um, discussion around culverts and uh, what additional uh, safety uh, things that we need to do relative to uh, emergency flooding and, and the process, and, um, especially with the fact that we're we're going to be looking at opportunities for 10, 11 inches of rain at a time, uh, which we, you know, the, the, right now the record for rainfall in New Hampshire is 11 inches in the 24 hour period. And that was at up Mount Washington. Um, but, you know, I'm looking at, for example, Florida. This, this weekend, they're going to get up to 12 inches of rain, and Texas is at it. And places that nobody's ever seen that kind of rain, it's happening. We're likely to have something come in and inundate us, and we've seen what five inches will do just this past December, um, and that was pretty you know, scary. Let me get down to it. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I talked to Gary Allen about culverts, and he's got a very good program put together, and he's oversizing culverts by at least 30% uh, for the future. So what he's putting in is not just replacing what's there, but uh, trying to step up. Yeah. Do, is there any sense that from the discussion whether or not what we have is reasonable in place or that we need to be making a special effort to make change? He has a, uh, I think, $50,000 uh, budget for culverts in place for this year or for next year. Um, and hopefully has gone through, they did a pretty good study of the culverts in town and uh, tried to pinpoint the ones that really needed to get replaced, like uh, Green Hill. Mm -hmm. uh, he just finished that one. Couldn't get, I think, the, maybe a four foot, because the, the water line is in there. Mm -hmm. 
went down to that and can't go beyond that. So he put in two 36 inch carpets. Mm -hmm. Which I'm like, oh, <laughs> that works. Oh, I didn't think that. But anyway, he, so he's trying to do that and has a pretty good schedule of, you know, what to deal with right away. So far, yes, we've been doing pretty well. Uh, the culverts that we have have held up and uh, the ones that are in need have, are getting repaired. How does it work, excuse my ignorance, um, how does it work relative to the, the state highways in town? Are, are we responsible for the town roads and the state is responsible for the state highways or do we as a town have Yes, I believe the state did the uh, Black Mountain Road, remember when, where, right where Wilson Road, right. so, so right. that all came through and state work. Mm -hmm. So there, remember that from the Conservation Commission they had the paperwork on that. So yes, the, the state does, I think, what they feel are their roads. They did all the ditching and the riprap wall in there, which are very sizable. Well, they put the culvert under the road, right. under Black Mountain Road, and then sandbagged it. And, you know, I thought they did a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just redid uh, Booty Farm and Carter after that intersection there. Amazing job. Yeah. It took like two days and we'll come. So and pretty soon our bridge will be back. Two or three days. Mm -hmm. I would echo that Gary's planning on this is excellent. Mm -hmm. I have a question on the fire suppression again. Um, two parts. Um, that looking at Conway just turning down one of their things. If the town puts down the new firehouse um, and the current firehouse is inadequate, should the town look at an alternative vis-a-vis -a, -vis a partnership with Bartlett to take over our fire suppression if we can't provide a safe working condition for our people. Is that something we should look at? Well, there's several towns in the valley contract with Conway for their fire mm -hmm. suppression. Mm -hmm. And just as a planning issue, not unlike what the precinct was thinking about putting in secondary wells as a backup plan, should be have a backup plan where we um, contract with Bartlett for a fire protection. And then the other second part was that fortunately in Jackson we have had precious few over the years house fires. Um, but the, a real danger would be particularly, I mean, we're talking about heavy rainfall, so we're lucky with the national forests that they stay pretty wet and free of fire, but that, that may be a real danger that we have in Jackson and of forest, wild, forest wildfires. And, uh, I don't know how the state, I, I don't know, I don't have a clue about how the state handles it, those sort of things, but that might be something we might look at as well. Yeah. yeah, emergency management is, it's on their schedule. Um, I'm not sure either because, you know, I, I think it gets pushed back because we don't have like, a lot of fire danger. But if we go back to the Brownfield Fire, right. which was, what, 1947? Mm -hmm. uh, it was a major, it went all the way to Portland. Yep. I mean, burning stuff all the way along. And that, that had happened over an extended dry period as well. Right. So, yeah. When you're working with your crew, uh, it would be useful, you're probably already doing it, but it, 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 just to understand what the federal government does. That, I have a question of what the state will do, but 
both of them. You know, it's the National yeah. Forest, yeah. and it's like, okay, it's National Forest, what, you know, did, did they, they send in, you know, 52 planes and 100 firefighters, or, or, or is there expectation that, um, you know, Jay is going to fire up his group and, and we're going to do our best to suppress it until uh, we have to cry uncle or something. Uh, I called in a lightning strike a number of years ago and had to wait for them to sort out whether the Forest Service was going to come in or the town was going to come in. So that's a place where we really need to, you know, get it going because it's like heart attacks. Yeah. The faster you react to it, the, you know, the better, the more successful you'll be. And, and you know, one of the, the great selling points of our town is, is that we're right up against the National Forest, we're the gateway to the National Forest. Um, on the other hand, there's some responsibility associated with that just simply because of proximity. Um, I, I think uh, Chief Burley has responded to, I'm not sure how many, uh, accidents that have been up on 16 where it's outside of Jackson, but we're the closest right. uh, party that can respond. And, and that might be a time when we would really need Freiburg as a place for the aircraft to refuel and right. take on water at the, at the lakes yeah. there. And so I, I don't think that you know Jay would be flying a, a water bomber. I hope not. I might try. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you, well, you, you could do it. Not at my age. Uh, you could help. You could, you could co pilot. No. No. <laughs> Stay on the ground. It seems to me, I don't, I, I don't know if we have anything in place or, or I, I'm not familiar with anything we have that says we're, we're, we're situated properly for. You know, what is the expectation of the federal government for Jackson to respond? I, I have no idea if they have any need for us or say that they have any need for us. On the other hand, if something happens, it seems we're closest we're to We're going to be in it. And we're going to be in it. So uh, it, it's kind of silly not to have some understanding of what, what the expectations are either way um, so that nobody's... Um, put in a bad position. Um, I have it down now to search out federal government and state government. Yeah, yeah. typically it's the uh, it's national forest land. I mean, everyone's got mutual aid agreements. We've got them with Gorm and Bartlett and North Conley and all of that. And initial tone outs <coughs> would go out of Carroll County Dispatch. But if it's a fire that is determined to require an incident command set up, that's typically either Fish and Game or National Force that comes and they are in, in control of the incident at that point. And they'll set up all logistical <coughs> operations, <coughs> identifying fire equipment and getting it up there, identifying who's up there working and what they need for food and cots and, and all of those things are all done uh, primarily in, in with, it's, that's exactly how Arathusa Falls went you know last year they were up there for a good week mm -hmm. to <coughs> completely douse all the fire so that's typically how it works Okay. So we may be a first responder to a lightning strike if it's on Forest Service land, yeah. but it's it's the communication that happens after that that gets the right people in to handle the right level of the incident. The, the, the other thought I was having around that is whether or not um, there would be any opportunity for federal funds to find their way here um, to support our, our fire department um, because of the fact that we might be first responders. It would have to be a pretty big fire department for aircraft. 
No, 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 I was just thinking in terms of, you know, if we have to be on, on point for something, um, that, that's, that's great, but it would also be helpful if, if they sent us a few dollars to help fund our, maybe our fire station or the, the equipment or even the costs of uh, having people available on call. Just a, just a thought. I don't even know if they man the fire towers anymore. Like on Kerrigan. Yeah, I, I don't think they do. I don't think no. they do. And remember the forest wardens, forest fire wardens, had the boxes? And yep. That's all been closed up, right? So that's no longer. So yeah. Yeah. we should look into it. Just, right? There might be something there. Proper own fire tower. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Any, any great? Any burning issues that we need to address? Burning, burning issues. <laughs> we got to go. It's okay. one. He started. <laughs> All right. I know we've talked about this, but is there anything in our any of our ordinance that should be reviewed to assist in affordable housing? Is there anything that we should consider to make it easier? Do, do you want to say that again? Because Scott was just not at his <laughs> desk that very moment that you had that question. Uh, I'm just saying, I, I read uh, there was an article about a lot of towns and cities across the country are reevaluating their zoning laws to accommodate short-term rentals in Manchester and Portsmouth are doing some major changes down there to their zoning requirements to alleviate, you know, hurdles in the zoning ordinances. I don't know if there is, I am not as familiar with this document to be that, but is that something that we should at least put a checkbox that says, we looked at it, we are where we want to be, um, and, and put a period. Is that something we're capable of doing, or should we plan for some help in that regard? North Country Council did it about five or six years ago, and it, it was sort of nipped in the bud because we were unclear as to what we wanted, I guess would be the way to describe it. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is not something we have, but we, we've looked at. I think when we looked at it, it was what almost six years ago now, um, and um, I don't know that things have changed that much in six years. Maybe they have, um, but the the tolerance level for making changes, for example, the um, road frontage, mm -hmm. uh, we did make adjustments, and we made adjustments for. Um, to accommodate affordable housing. Were they enough? Probably not. <clears throat> um, when you take a look to I see what, what's up. The question, the question is really, is there anything that really can make a difference in the zoning? Yeah. You know, like, if we could reduce frontage to like a and I think all we do is have more property sell at the same price that they're selling. That, that's you know, I don't think reducing frontage is going to create affordable properties. It might create more density, but not necessarily more affordable properties. Um, without sewer and water throughout the town, that you know, more than anything limits any density efforts. What other municipalities are doing, especially out of state, <coughs> you know, that's very out of the box, is doing <coughs> things like paying property owners to long-term rent their property up to $20,000 a year, I think it was, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to short-term rent, um, or leave it vacant for that. Um, uh, tax breaks are also something that's done a lot in Massachusetts, but I don't believe we have the ability to do that. I'm not sure that's a planning board action anyhow. But it's, it's those more direct 
financial incentives that towns like us are now turning to because <clears throat> increasing density, you know, either is it possible because we don't have the, the you know the, the facilities for it, um, or it doesn't change the affordability. Yeah, I know there's a, there is a bill in Concord now to allow municipalities to do the tax. There isn't anything that Jackson could do today, but there is a bill. I don't know if it'll ever be talked about this year or not, but it will allow local municipalities to do that tax break for right. their folks in their town if they wish to do it right now. It was also designed to allow housing in areas that were formerly just commercial. Right. Was it? They're really pushing that. But again, yes, they are. And um, again, those are areas that have water and sewer. Yeah. Um, the, um, I mean, the, the one thing we could do is if we, you know, we turned around and, you know, and said no to the short term rentals, that would make the difference. But we're also run against, you know, a lot of what people believe, you know, is their rights and some of put us in the court. Yeah. Yeah, I talked to a local guy who owns a hotel here in Bartlett and asked him how he could convert his hotel into apartments. And he goes, it's very costly yeah. Yeah. because hotels don't have kitchens yeah. in every room. So it, it changes their whole, with water and sewer, it's much easier because you're not needing the number better to the but the I suggested last month to that end of density is to, it's been 10 years since we had a build out analysis. That would define if we had any areas where the soils were appropriate for, um, and the key is less frontage. We did change about, what was it, about six years ago where we did the setback in the frontage. That was a big deal. That changed a lot. Um, but um, there, there are just so few properties for sale throughout the whole state that we're never going to increase the number of properties in the town such that it drives the price down. I agree. But again, there, the Housing Commission's charge is to view this on a regional basis. Not just Jackson. No, not necessarily. It's it's the view that's on a local basis. I mean that that was the enabling legislation. Oh, it's it's, it's the work within the region, but the focus is on Jackson. Yeah. I just want to feel comfortable with it. But the thought I mean it, it was, it's been in the news all week about the you know, inflation going up and down. That what's driving it the most is housing all across the country. Yeah. And the coasts are the part of the city. Well, if we wanted to, if we, if we didn't ban mobile home parks, then we'd have to change things. You heard the, the dead silence after that one. <laughs> I did. Yeah. All right, well, uh, fancy, tiny homes made That's right. Okay. Yeah. Well, that is, there, there's a community that's being built like that, tiny home community. Yeah. Well, I mean, Ann Peterson's development is really a tiny home right. development. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, mobile, uh, tiny, mobile homes are a type of tiny home, but there's lots of other types. I think as we we discuss, Scott, uh, mobile homes are not prohibited in town. Right, it's just mobile parks. Just mobile home parks. I just want to said this before, but when Wentworth Hall was built, for the same cost of putting in all those septic systems and the pumping systems that they put into that, for the same dollar cost, they could have put in a small um, sewer treatment plant in Jackson that would put out corners of water that could have gone into it. And I tried to push that onto the 
some colleges and studies. I was looked at like I had an eye in the middle of the floor. Mm -hmm. They said never will Jackson have the sort of treatment done. Could have changed a lot. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so I'm going to move on. Um, I'm taking that as a, uh, we don't have any pressing issues, but uh, if something does come up, if you run across something, please we, we do have some little extra capacity this fall, I think, to look at stuff. Something. Something we talked about a while back was, you know, there are homes that, you know, that because of, you know, because of grandfather, they're, you know, they're uh, not performing, um, are very um, limited as to what kind of, you know, renovation work and improvement work can be done. And I thought we had discussed, you know, looking at, you know, are there ways that we can to some degree allow greater non-conformity toward making these better properties in the town. be a difficult thing to codify, but I guess we'd be willing to look at it. You come up with some ideas on it. Yeah. We'll listen. I just I thought we discussed that. I think maybe like corner properties or something like that was the, this. Um, I know that came up at one point. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have properties that are sort of languishing because the owners really can't do much with them, so they, they kind of just deteriorate over time instead. I think maybe that our Kevin, you know, since he's our building inspector and everything else, would be able to say, hey, listen, this guy wants to be able to do this, and we we would look at it and maybe confirm it or not confirm it. Mm -hmm. But you know, I mean, for example, if someone's you know, <coughs> within within the setback, you know, does increasing the volume of that building, you know, extending more of it along that same, you know lack of setback, does that really change anything? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, it's already it's, you know, it's touchy to try to, like you said, to codify it. It is something you brought up a while. Yeah, I'm not sure if you heard Jerry's comment under his breath saying it's a ZBA issue. Um, currently it is, and I, if I'm hearing Scott correctly is suggesting that we would have some guidelines or something in place that would that, that could change how how we look at it and whether or not it needs to get to a ZBA for approval or not. Um, if you, if you've got something that that you can pull together that we can look at. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're creative and we like to do things, but it's usually beneficial if we have a starting point. So go out of thin air. Um, capital Improvement Program. Update. Where are we? What are we doing? We've got a wonderful spreadsheet. Well, I modified it so it wouldn't be tiny. Hopefully it's a little bit easier for people to read. It's not too small, and I put the deers in the front. Um, <clears throat> mine was just kind of putting all together what we've talked about and saying, is this what we agree on? I do have an update. Barb talked to Aaron, is that her name? The principal? Aaron Berger. Oh, the principal, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, she apparently does want to put something on the docket for the capital improvement. Okay. So she's going to email me okay, great. some ideas that she has. Um, she doesn't know if it'll be approved or there's money, but 
she wants to get it in writing somewhere. Yeah. Um, That'd be wonderful. So she talked to her today, emailed her tonight, and so I think I'll get something from her. Um, I don't know what it'll be. Another okay. country heard from. Yep. Yes. She's been doing a great job. Right now. She knew it was there, just trying to get stuff off her desk. Yeah. And she finally feels that she has some time to put her arms around something that she has to do. Well, this sure beats question mark. That's correct. That is correct. But we'll see. So th this is kind of where we are left. So, yeah, but what we have right now is like a list. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I had thought we were going to do at some point is not just have a list of things, but also try to set them in some kind of uh, either priority or scheduling or Time timing that says, yeah, that's a great thing, but, you know, like next century, please. Or um, this is something that needs to happen in the next three years. This is something that can go in the five to seven year range. This is eight to ten. Uh, a, a good for example would be, I think, uh, the Gray's Inn garage here, uh, where I think we've talked about, you know, sh should, it, should it get pulled down? Right. Um, uh, 20, 26, 2026 is when we should deal with that. I'm right. So it's like, well, I'm using that because we okay. have it there already. Okay. And it's like, okay, when when's the right time to do that? Is it 2026 or is it something that, yes, yeah, an eyesore, but it's it's also an expenditure that it can wait right. kind of thing. But there's too many moving parts before that. Yeah. Because, one, the fire station has to be built and we all have to be satisfied or be in progress. We have to figure out all the stuff. We just had a situation two weeks ago, three weeks ago, in that building because the chamber stuff, the duct race was stuck behind a truck that was in there and they couldn't get it out. So Gary drove all the way down from his house on Memorial Day to move a truck because nobody could move the truck except him that was in there because of the salt roof that they're putting on. He had to put the truck in there. So it was blocking, and nobody's taking the space that they're supposed to be. So we first have to figure out what's in there, what needs to stay with us, and if we're going to demolish it, where is it going? And if everybody sits down and says, oh, I'm sorry, I can't take my stuff out of there, then tearing it down is not going to be an option. It will be a, a fix, because there's a there's a lot of things in there, and when it was open for the duck race day, <laughs> we looked into it. It's not as bad as you think, I mean, and it's highly useful. Um, the problem is it's not on a foundation. That's the problem. But it's still, st it's still standing. And I don't think a construction guy would build it if it doesn't get put onto a foundation. Because it's not on the foundation. I'm just saying it's, it's, Look in the back. It, yeah, That's going to fall into the river. Yeah. Talk about hazard material going into yeah. the river. That's going to fall into the river. And that's hazardous material. So I, I don't care one way or the other. If it stays, it stays. We'll just find a contractor who's willing to but if, raise it to put it on a foundation. If, if Dave and Barbara have put numbers to these things, is it really up to us or the select body and the taxpayers to decide what the timing of these things would be. If, if we just put them out there and said, here's things that could happen over a period of time based on what the selection. We took my numbers off because that's a year ago. God knows what the price is. Yeah. And, and it, it all depends on what we decide to do. If, if we decide to redo it, then I need to get like a, J, a Drew or a major contractor out here to say, this is what you're going to, I got a facelift putting lipstick on that place. Do you not have numbers on it? Not anymore. anymore. I took them off because oh. it's been too long. I was hoping they still had the numbers on it. We just call it good but, and go. But that, there's no backing for that number. We talked about that. We're not putting numbers on something that we don't have any support on. I can't remember, but when you came to the board with that issue, 
Was was there an asbestos conversation? Is there asbestos in there? No. We suspect no. There, there's no walls in there. <laughs> That's well, well, that office area. I, I just wasn't sure. Yeah, we didn't get in the office. No insulation of any kind. We need no. To there's no insulation. So maybe like paint. Could be, you but know. I think the paint's been relatively new on the outside. Yeah, but what is it? The '70s, isn't that? Oh, the roof is newer than that. No, but I mean lead paint. If there was yeah. something, we didn't have paint in that. We didn't go to that level of detail. To yeah, okay. But I mean, it's just literally just it's curious, beautiful. Right? You're right. Inside, the wood. It is amazing how right. well kept right. that building is. And yes, you you take all the siding off. You take the roof off. You put it on a new foundation. You put new siding on it. You're not going to insulate it. It's a garage. Right. You know, it's the foundation that I've been told is the most expensive thing. A lot of things in there that nobody wants to give up. Right. Right. But there's stuff in there that just it's it's just trash. Junk. It's junk. It's like, yeah, well, I'd like to have well, I mean, a spare set of tires for my spare set of tires for my spare set of tires. It's and not quite if that. you have to throw them away, I mean, there's a police car in there. There's trucks. It's, 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 yeah, the police car doesn't even work. Yeah. So, but you, you made another comment, which I'd like to respond to, and you asked, could we just put a list out there and then and then let everybody else decide? But it doesn't have numbers on it, that doesn't make sense. The point of being a planning board is, is that you plan, and a planning board is recommending actions, and if you take a look at what a capital improvement program is supposed to provide, it is supposed to provide exactly that recommendation to the governing body about what things need to be accomplished over a reasonable period of time, and what the priorities of those things are relative to the planning board's perspective. Not that we know everything, and the voters certainly know the answer to any question, uh, that is being asked as to what should be funded, um, but uh, and again, it, it is in support of the uh, select board, it, and the select board gets to do whatever the heck they want with the thing. They can ignore the darn thing. They can uh, they can put a lot of energy. They can do whatever the heck they want. They can just totally disregard it and say these people are crazy. We should have put other people on the planning board. Um, but it's our job to plan. And it's our job to say, here are the things that we would like to see done over a period of time and what resources we think might be required in order to do them and what priorities we should be setting as a town. Um, and we do that in conjunction with, and that's why we want to have a, a, a listening session uh, whatever you want to call it, darn thing, uh, in the fall, and hear other people's perspective and see whether or not they agree or disagree with what we thought. Uh, and take Rather than putting dates down, actually hard dates, what color them? We start with, you know, red, orange, yeah, yellow. These, these are high, these are low. I mean, yeah. you put, uh, for... For me, whenever I've done work, it's like the A stuff and C stuff. You never get it, the C stuff, but it's listed and it's there. Or, you, uh, gee, you know, it's a C thing, but I can do that one like in October or two years from now. And I can get it off the list and let's do that because I can. And it's got to be irritating somebody or it wouldn't have been there. Um, and so you, you, you kind of call those when you can. And put those in. Um, one of the things that has bothered me about the listing is that we we have separate activities uh, for what uh, increasing the size of the town offices. Mm -hmm. We also have something for police station, yes. or, and also for the fire station, and it. it seems to me that and I, 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 just watching what Freiburg did, they, they tried to roll everything all into one and put it into a $16 million bonding, which did not pass. Um, but my thought was is that if we're looking at 
three separate efforts in a very small footprint here. Um, when we take a look at, we're spending money right now, I guess, at, at the fire station, looking at the fire station and situating that nearby here. Um, Bob, when, when that's being done, <clears throat> will the person who's looking at that take a look to see what that would mean relative to um, adding space for the town offices and for the police department, or is that just off, totally off the table? In, in the fire and rescue building? Yeah. If we get into a new station? Yeah. Well, the timeline for that would be the, the bond passing in March and the <clears throat> design and build committee that's really being headed by, you know, the chief and Richie Construction and, and all of the mechanical engineering plumbing folks and the town engineer and the architect, uh, they'll be ready to break ground and present keys to a new station eight months after they break ground. So we would have that time knowing certain that's what the voters wanted. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> nobody's really recommending that we spend major time on that right now given just that workload of getting that uh, voter ready Shovel ready project, mm -hmm. you know, to town meeting in March. Yeah. Um, but we've we've just heard things. We haven't yeah. uh, instigated any discussions. We've listened a lot. Um, so nobody's married to anything, mm -hmm. including police, including fire, including the board. Yeah. No one's come out and said, "Here's what I think we should do with yeah. that." I guess it's my not question is that the, there are four doors in the front too. You've got you've got a door in the back of the fire station. Then you've got the two doors that were at one point the highway department. So there are lots of access points to the building with different ages on them. What, have you decided a location? A location for the fire department. The fire and rescue department. Yes. We presented that at the town meeting. Yeah. And where is that? The fire and rescue department proposal yeah. that, so the voters voted to uh, you know, support the Warren article that asked for $250,000 for a design and build study committee to design and build uh, a, a fire and rescue station in the location between the fire department and this, these town offices. And that was explicit on that Warren article. Bob, I, I guess, and that's why I'm asking the question. It, 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 I know that you're looking at that location, and it, it's going to be right up against the access for the police station, the current police station. And I guess my question is, is that as you look at that, um, either pro, you know, some future time that we're talking about, well, we need to make a change to either the, this building or to the police station. Um, will that be a, a, you know, kind of a thought in mind as, as you're putting together the architectural drawings that uh, even if you're not funding or going to do that for their five or 10 years, um, they have a, a possibility that you understand how that's going to work so that it all works together. Yeah, we the the design and build committee is specific and limited in scope to the fire and rescue station. However, we've entertained and planned for and agreed on the importance of making sure that the roof is solar ready. And, and, and identifying parking spaces out back that are EV recharging ready because we're, we're digging and, and all of that stuff. And I mean, you're really looking at about a $3,000 cost to do that on a project of that size. It makes sense to have it sense. ready. Yeah. But we have not, I mean, when you, when you saw the architect uh, drawings at the town meeting, you saw that clear delineation where the parking lot for the police 
area is not going to be impacted in any way. To the site. Yeah. So, so we haven't really entertained that. I mean, I'm just, I'm just thinking. I'm, there are a lot of possibilities. Yeah, I'm just I mean, we're talking. We're, I think we've heard. Well, the police are pretty happy where they are, but maybe they could, they'd be interested in using the garages for the vehicles for the rolling equipment. I'm just trying to blue sky the idea yeah. of if we have all these other things that are we talked about and we're going to look at them and say, okay, yeah, these are things we need to get done in the next ten years. Um, are there ways that we can make sure that we're thinking about <coughs> them so that the next step is a lot easier to get at than, yeah. than just starting from scratch again and, and then getting everybody riled up about doing this or doing that? Because we initially had talked when we thought the firehouse was going over here. Now one of the ideas we tossed around was building a car plant where the police park their cars right now is in the open air. If we built a carport for that and then extended this building into that carport, so, you know what I mean? So maybe parking under the building is basically what they would be doing. Yeah. That space is still available because you're not starting, the, from my understanding, drawings, it's right. starting it to be left of that. Yeah, it won't be touched. So that idea would still be available to us. Yeah. And that would open up all the space then. That's crowded, really right. crowded. And when you get people in there, it's just like absolutely right. ridiculous. Well, that's what, that's what David was describing. Right. Yes, I know. And that allows us also to keep the police truck, what you call, yes. out of the weather. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then yeah. at, least, at least undercover, they'd still be yeah. outside, but at least undercover for them. So that doesn't alleviate some of the ideas that we have here mm -hmm. where you're putting the fire station. Right. And the addition could. To your point, if you think about it, it could be changed or does the, if, when we get to that plan, because I've done planning for office space, do you repaint this building to kind of go with that building so it's gonna like sit next to it? You know what I mean? Just in the future, yeah. does yeah. this building start to look remodeled from the outside to look more like that building? Yeah. So it does look more like a continuous, because we had talked about looking at that storage, that emergency, van thing that's in there that had along that has to stay inside um, it's required according to Emily that it cannot be stored outside the so, public health emergency yeah that is, that's why we have it because we have a place to yeah. put it inside it doesn't mm -hmm. we could go in the fire the old the current fire station's bay it could be parked right in there no problem absolutely and, and then off-road giant green vehicle we have in there Army thing, forestry truck could be put yeah. in there. Absolutely. And I mean, that'd be a perfect storage for those things, which would empty out half the space in that building. <laughs> Just those two things out of there. Yeah. You know. Is that the one that had to be moved and no one could move it? Yeah, no, it was his. It was Gary. It was Gary's truck. Oh, okay. It was Gary's truck. And yeah. then he just put it in there because of this. They're doing yeah. this. Yeah. So well, it. it, it you made a great point. It's got good bones in a lot of ways for an uninsulated un un garage, and it's it's really a champ. But at the same time, all of these things that are contingent yeah. on decisions being made, yeah, like we're going to get on. rid of everything in there and raise that building or use that land for another purpose or sell it, and if so, what? do we need to get rid of and what do we need to find a new place to store? Right. That all is good. That's all and decided. So Those decisions have to be made before we even think about it. Yeah. And, and yeah. there's certainly potential yeah. in the fire and rescue station if... we got a lot of storage over there. <laughs> yeah. That stuff. Yeah. Obviously more than a few police cruisers could go in there. Yeah. And, and you're assuming that taxpayers are going to approve it. I'm not assuming anything. Well, Bob is. No. No. I, I was clear I'm on just that. tossing it out. Well, I know it's getting hard. If they, if they say no, then. I'm clear on that. It's, no. It's, no, it's, no. Right. Then it's, all of this gets thrown out. That's why I explained we haven't spent time on it. Right. Right. That's why I don't think we should. That's why I put 2026 to even talk about that. Yeah. Because by then, yeah. we'll know what's going on with the fire station by 2026, hopefully. 
So that's how I saw this. It was, it was just not when it's it's like because I agree. I think because I read the last one. It's more write up. I'm, this isn't the document, but I just looked at this as like we start writing up. I don't want to say stories in a negative way, but we start explaining mm -hmm. these things. Yeah. And that's what we present in September. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure that this one yeah. so we can start writing it. Because Sarah was supposed to write it. Oh, that's right. She's not here. Today. Well, when you're not here, you get assigned. That's right. No, we assigned it to her last one. Last one, and she was here. So, for example, the graze in property as it's mm -hmm. identified on the capital improvement plan, there it's. There's a couple of different spots, storage containers, if the gray zone is destroyed, what do we need containers, you know, and what would that cost be, but mm -hmm. you've got a, a cell for uh, removing the current building or, and then, mm -hmm. or repair with upgrades to the current building. So you're not gonna be making like a, you don't see the planning, the, the capital improvement plan making a recommendation of what to do, just costing out the different um, possibilities. Eventually, in 2026, yeah, I would spell out exactly what I think we should need to do. Make a specific yeah. recommendation, yeah. raise it, if, or if the house, it, if the, or, okay. the firehouse is there, yeah. I think we demolish the thing and give it a, and make it a part. If we can find places for everything that's in there, I'm going to get rid of it. There's a real, that that would be my my, but I'm only one of seven here. Mm -hmm. But that would be my recommendation. We get rid of it. Please green space. space. Green yeah, space. Make a green space. We need it. Because you, you can't sell it. It's too. I don't know if you can put. The town shouldn't be in the business of selling land. Well, and it's any old land we can get. It, it's also in the floodplains. So. Yeah, so we couldn't. And the the ski trail runs right up next to it. For me, a green space would be perfect. I mean, you could really. Highlight. We could really highlight the, the green space. That would be my recommendation. But that's all contingent on everything else being approved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. But if it's not, then we have to turn it into a garage. Yeah. So. All right. Um, any further discussion for this evening? Uh, <clears throat> we have two meetings before. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think I heard a motion. Did I hear a motion? I'm in motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you guys. Thank you, Scott. Scott.